Friday's anti-Israeli Al-Quds Day demonstrations turned violent along the Gaza border, as Israeli soldiers opened fire on Palestinian protesters. More than 600 Palestinians were reportedly wounded as protesters came under Israeli gunfire as they headed to the Gaza fence, according to Gaza's health ministry. Three Palestinians were killed, including a 15-year-old. The demonstrations in Gaza were organized by Hamas, the Islamic militant group ruling the blockaded Palestinian enclave. Gaza residents were urged to head to the perimeter fence on the Israeli border after noon prayers. The call was issued through mosques and loudspeakers mounted on cars that toured Gaza neighborhoods. Read more, Israel erecting sea barrier to prevent Gaza infiltrators Several protesting Palestinians also donned uniforms similar to those worn by Jewish prisoners in World War II, Ahmed Abu Ardima told the AP news agency, We want to remind the world that the Israeli occupation is committing the same massacres that the Nazis committed, denying, trivializing or mocking the Holocaust is not uncommon in the Muslim world. Demonstrators burned U.S. and Israeli flags during Al-Quds Day protests in Tehran Al-Quds Day protests The annual Al-Quds Day demonstrations see hundreds of thousands of people across the Middle East protest Israeli control of Jerusalem. Marches were also held in several other Middle East cities, including Damascus, Tehran and Baghdad. Al-Quds is Arabic for Jerusalem. Protests have been held every year since the 1979 Islamic Revolution in Iran. Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini declared the last Friday of the fasting month of Ramadan as a day to demonstrate the importance of Jerusalem to Muslims. Read more, what is Iran's Revolutionary Guard? This year's protests come at a particularly sensitive time. U.S. President Donald Trump's decision to recognize Jerusalem as the Israeli capital and relocate the U.S. Embassy prompted mass unrest across the Muslim world. Jerusalem's Al-Aqsa Mosque is the third holiest site in Islam, after the Saudi cities of Mecca and Medina. Palestinians see the eastern part of the city as the capital of their future state. Since late March, Palestinians have held regular marches up to the border fence separating Gaza and Israel. At least 115 protesters have been killed by Israeli soldiers during the marches, and a further 3,800 have been wounded. Despite drawing widespread international criticism, Israel has defended its decision to open fire on protesters, saying it has a right to defend its border. The convoy of Palestinian Prime Minister Rami Hamdali of the West Bank-based Fatah group was targeted as he made a rare visit to Gaza on March 13. The Palestinian Authority said it held Hamas responsible, having failed to provide adequate security. Hmm. Hamas claimed the attack was aimed at hurting efforts to achieve unity and reconciliation. Palestinians in the Gaza Strip announce a major, peaceful demonstration to be held on the border to claim the right to return to lands now held by Israel. Israel refuses the right to return. Some 30,000 Palestinians take part in the first of the demonstrations on March 30, marking Land Day, named for the 1976 Arab protests against Israeli plans to expropriate land. Some demonstrators ran at the border fence and 16 were killed by Israeli troops with others injured, and some dying later. Speaking on April 9 in the Israeli town of Dero, near Gaza, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said, We have one clear and simple rule, and we seek to express it constantly, if someone tries to attack you, rise up and attack him. We will not allow, here on the Gaza border, them to hurt us. We will hurt them. The third day of demonstrations on April 13 began with organizers encouraging people to walk on an Israeli flag placed at the protest near the border. Palestinians ran to help a young man injured during the border protest on April 13. Stones had been thrown at border guards and the Israeli troops fired on the demonstrators. Some 45 Palestinians have died and hundreds have been injured between March 30 and April 27. Protest continued on April 20th, with some Palestinian protesters using kites to transport Molotov cocktails and firebombs over the fence. Israeli snipers killed at least four more Palestinians on April 20th, including a 15-year-old boy. 
the UN Middle East envoy dubbed the killing outrageous. U.S. President Donald Trump star Ivanka is part of the delegation that opened the new U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem. The transfer of the embassy triggered a fresh wave of protests in which 62 people were killed. The deaths have considerably heightened tensions in the area. As the U.S. celebrated its embassy move from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, Palestinian protests escalated. The events coincided with the 70th anniversary of the foundation of modern-day Israel, and Nakba Day, when Palestinians recall those who fled or were expelled as Israel was established. Palestinians carried away a protester injured on May 15 after demonstrations marking the 70th anniversary of Nakba. Salah al Bardawil, a Hamas official said on Palestinian television that all but 12 of the dead were members of Hamas. Mahmoud Abbas the head of the Palestine Liberation Organization is planning to pursue a war crimes complaint against Israel at the International Criminal Court. Anti-Israeli protests in major Middle East cities al Day protests began early in Iran with nationwide marches, including a major rally outside of Tehran University. Crowds in the capital burned U.S. and Israeli flags and chanted, Death to America, and Death to Israel. An effigy of U.S. President Donald Trump was also hanged from a crane. Iran does not recognize the state of Israel and openly backs anti-Israeli militant groups, including Hamas and Lebanon's Hezbollah. Read more, could Germany act as mediator between Israel and Iran? In Damascus, scores of Syrians and Palestinians marched from the Hamidiyah market in the Old City to the Umayyad Mosque, waving Syrian and Palestinian flags. Syrian citizen Salma Abdullah told AP that the Jerusalem issue was a cause affecting all Muslims and that commemorating the day was a motivation for us and for all Palestinians to restore the occupied land. In Baghdad, Iran-backed Shiites held up posters of the late Iranian leader Ayatollah Khomeini and Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei before going on to set an Israeli flag on fire. In the Pakistani capital of Islamabad, Shiite and Sunni Muslims rallied together against Israel, burning Israeli and U.S. flags, as well as a Trump effigy. Pakistan also does not have diplomatic relations with Israel and has observed the al Quds Day since it began in 1979. DM, KMS, AP, DPA, AFP, DW editors send out a selection of the day's hard news and quality feature journalism. You can sign up to receive it directly here.